Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to Japan. This is the B League, and it's San and Neo Phoenix taking on Yokohama B Corsairs, a battle in the Central Conference. A lot of excitement as fans uh, gearing up to come into the arena. Of course, they're inside now as we get close to the tip-off, but you can see the enthusiasm uh, around this San and Neo Phoenix team, around basketball in general in Japan. And why not? It's been a, it's been a great start to the season for San In coming into this game. Flying high. And certainly uh, one of the teams uh, to keep an eye on. Uh, they are buzzing here about, about their team and uh, looking forward to, to building on what has been a very positive start to the season. They've won nine out of their first 11 games. And going up against a Yokohama V Corsairs team that obviously one of the big stories last season uh, made it to the playoffs uh, but as you can see in the central San in at 9-2, and two, uh, really uh, up there with uh, Kawasaki Brave Thunders and Yokohama beat Corsairs down at 5-6. and six. So four games off the pace. Very important uh, day uh, for Yokohama as they try to get a win on the road. So for San and New Phoenix, you look at their roster today and uh, Cody Clark, uh, you've got Soto Aura, David Dzinski, uh, you've got uh, Ryusei Sasaki, and Kazuki Hosokawa. Also, you've got Yante uh, Matten, Atsuya Ota, Moroguchi, Kanamaru, of course, Kosuke Kanamuru, Yu, and Yamauchi, led by Coach Ono. And uh, for the Yokohama B Corsairs, Jared Utah, Yuki Kawamura, uh, Yusei Sugiura. You've got Koya Sudo, Josh Scott, uh, Chikara Tanaka, uh, Yo Nishino, uh, Darren Oliver, excuse me, Devin Oliver, and uh, Kenta Mori, Kai King, Hiroki Matsuzaki, and... Edwin Edward Morris, Yokohama, uh, starting with U Utah, uh, Kawamura, Sug Sugiura, Sudo, and Scott. And we'll also see the starting five for Santa Neo Phoenix. Lights lowered, except for those uh, red lightsabers. Something out of Star Wars. San and Neo Phoenix, you look at their schedule. Their last five games and uh, what they've been able to do. And it's been a good run, although it did come to a halt. Uh, they did lose that last one to Uthonomia Brex. Excuse me, no, they won that one. Uh, excuse me, they lost 75-73 to Ustanovia Brex and they won 89-73. So that is uh, San. You can see their, their form has been... Uh, Pretty good, obviously, at 9-2. and two, They're winning most of their games. Uh, for Yokohama B Corsairs, though, it's been a different story. It's been patchy. It's been on and off, on and off. And, uh, you know, Sendai 89ers, uh, for example, their last, their last uh, series on November 5th, uh, they won 87-84. to 84, But before that, uh, they had fallen 85 to 54 so it's a, a little bit hard to explain 
uh, the form of of the Corsairs, especially, well, you know, you look at Yuki Kawamura, it's always uh, perhaps difficult to follow up an MVP campaign like the one that he had last year as well as playing at the World Cup. Maybe maybe a lot of basketball catching up with him. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's young, and uh, I think he's. we've yet to see the best of him this season. So you look at the, the numbers of these two teams, and three-point shooting actually better for Yokohama B Corsairs. Free throw shooting below 70%, about 67.6. That's not good. 76.1% uh, though for San N is always uh, important. And we're gonna highlight Yuki Kawamura as is usually the case. And uh, for Yokohama, B Corsairs, and going up against Sasaki. Ryusei Sasaki, uh, what those two guys have been able to do, 12.6 points, 3.8 assists. Also, uh, you don't see it there, but 1.6 rebounds for him. For Sasaki and for Yuki Kawamura, uh, he comes in averaging 24 points a game, 5.6 assists per game, and 2.1 rebounds. Uh, you know, some of his shooting has been wayward, but a lot of the offense goes through him, and you never want to be one-dimensional. You never want to rely too much on one player. Obviously, Colin Murrow, when push comes to shove, is the best player in this team. Uh, but they need Devin Oliver uh, to be big. They need Josh Scott to be big. And those two guys really, and Utah obviously as well, who's uh, in that starting five today, that starting lineup. So looking at the starting five for Santa Neo Phoenix, Clark, Ura, Dudzinski, Sasaki, who we just highlighted, and Hosokawa. Uh, Coach Ono needs no introduction. So there's Coach Ono. And the way he coaches, you could almost uh, rename him OES because he does a great job with this club. And the referees uh, lining up for today's game as well. And again, once again, the starting fives for both teams. So you've got on the left, Clark, Uru, Dudzinski, Sasaki, and Hosokawa. And for Yokohama, Utah, Kawamura, Sugiyura, Sudo, and Scott. Well, the good news for Yokohama B Corsairs is even though they're not in the playoff spots right now, there's a long way to go, and you never want to peak too early. I mean, you look back at Chiba Jets last season, it looked like no team was going to be able to beat them, and they did win the Emperor's Cup, but then when they got to the final, uh, they, f they fell in the final. So uh, it's, you know, losing to uh, Ryuku Golden Kings uh, swept 2-0, so... Yokohama, who made it to the semifinals, fell to Ryuku Golden Kings. 
and they would love to make it back to the playoffs. So we're underway, folks. Hello, everybody. Welcome. And it's uh, Yokohama Beat Corsairs winning the opening tip, wearing the whites and attacking the basket to the left on your screen. And Yuki Kawamura taking it in and scoring the first points of the game. Zinski, good uh, use of his uh, feet, backing his way down. Not much uh, resistance by Utah. Having to feel him out, figure out what he's going to do. Here's Utah out on the perimeter. Kawamura gives it back to Utah, who puts it on the deck and drives in and gets blocked by Zinski. And quickly and driving in in his first bucket, uh, Sasaki. Here's Kawamura again in the lane, hands it off, and Scott not able to get it to go. The veteran hustles back down the court. Clark hands it off. And driving in, and this time missing the layup. Well, it looked like uh, Hosokawa had an easy one and just <laughs> did not make the easiest of shots uh, confirmed on the replay. Clark throwing the handles for the big man. Drives in, scores with the left hand using the glass. Six unanswered points for the home team. Sat in, Neo Phoenix. Pass whipped out the three point shot. Sugiota, that's big. They need somebody else other than Kawamura to step up. Driving and missing. And the whistle blows. Should mention as well that 30 Ravain and not playing today for San and Neo Phoenix, the Philippines International, uh, resting because of a concussion. And definitely that's one thing about Ravain that has happened over the years. Well, since I've watched him play, he drives a lot. He's uh, had some hard falls. Ball goes out of bounds. Kawamura trying to make it happen, whipping the pass in there, and Josh Scott. Hard to understand how that he didn't catch that one. Cody turns, spins, puts it up. Well, he likes that bank shot, doesn't he? And what do you worry about for? Oh, look at that. Great hustle. Diving on the floor for the Lewis ball. Hosikawa goes in and doesn't make, doesn't miss it this time. So not good sign so far for Yokohama here on the road. Scott, another turnover. They knew the handoff was coming. Sasaki steals it and hands it off to Hosikawa. Very rough start for Josh Scott. Timeout has been called. 12 to 5, Santa Neo Phoenix. And again, here's Josh Scott. They know that he's going to hand it off. So, Sasaki says, Thank you very much, and goes the other way. And then he hands it off for the easy layup for Hosokawa. Timeout. Let's go down to the bench.
So coming out of the timeout, the Oklahoma B Corsairs need to snap to it. They need to get with the program here. This thing is going to be over quickly. The way they've turned it over, there is Kawamura penetration. Beautiful pass and a nice finish from Utah. And that way he has the rim uh, using uh, the rim kind of as a screen almost to keep away the defender in case he goes up for a block. Jadzinski, turn around, good. Right, David Jadzinski now 31 years of age, remembering him when he played in Belgium in the Basketball Champions League. And just a really good player. Getting it done here now. Kawamura, another miss. Cody Clark gets blocked by Utah, but gets it back, drives in, and this time misses. So a little message defensively there by Utah. If he can uh, really raise his level on that end, that will really help. Kawamura, oh, beautiful Euro step, gets in. Oh, doesn't get the three point play opportunity, but will go to the line. Watch Kawamura the way he does this Euro step. Bam, bam. Not going that way, he's going this way. And again, it's awfully difficult for Sasaki to keep up with. But now instead of uh, going for the three point play, he's got to make two just to get the two. Two free throws, and he does. Make the first. Cody Clark from downtown. So fourteen nine lead and yeah, he might be able to hit that shot. I'm not sure that was a good shot in that situation early in the shot clock. Maybe get a better shot. Wide open three and stepped out of bounds. So Sudo turns it over. Nice pass by Scott. Oh, left wide open, Sasaki. Now the long rebound take, and uh, Utah silky smooth, lays it up and in. And showing some good basketball here in the last couple of possessions, last couple of plays. Kuzinski backs his way down low, have to pass it around. Cody Clark drives in, bowls his way in, in fact and earns a trip to the free throw line. Tanaka also in the game right now. Oh, excuse me, no, it's... Um, let's see, Cody Clark at the line. Kai King checks into the game. And Cody Clark stretches the lead. Back up to five. Kawamura. Oh, takes the bump. Make sure he gets the shot up. Sudo. Or Sasaki, rather, with the foul. Sasaki thinking, I'm just standing there. And Kawamura initiates the contact, but I get called for the foul. He has to go out of the game. Well, I think if he did a poll, I could be wrong. 
But I think if you did a poll and you asked uh, every general manager, every coach, which player they'd like to be in their team, they'd say that man right there, Colin Mora. He's 22 years of age, a player that you can lock down for a long time and just does so many things as the floor general. Uh, but here he commits the foul. Now, I think Kawamura did the exact same thing at the other end, and now he's saying that, <laughs> hey, I was victimized on this, but... Yamauchi at the line makes the first and the second. So Morihisa Yamauchi, who only averages two and a half points per game coming into this. Calmer, a beautiful pass to Scott. And Scott finishes with the left hand. Oh boy, they just left the gate wide open for Matten. And the 27 year old goes in for the easy one. Kawamura. Utah for three. Scott doing Josh Scott things. Rebound, passes back outside. And Kawamura, I think, made that shot more difficult than it needed to be. And fortunately for them, Kai Kane was there to clean up the mess. Match him with the pick. Now he's going to roll. But they're going to pass it out to Katamaru. And... Kosuke Kanamaru misses, but they'll retain possession. The players coming off the bench for this San and Neo Phoenix team. Just like uh, Devin Oliver coming in for Yokohama B Corsairs, as well as Matsuzaki. Matsuzaki only averages a couple of points per game, but Oliver comes in averaging uh, 9.4 points. And really, they get the turnover now. Kawamura, three-on-one break. A beautiful pass back to Scott! Well, that was sublime stuff from Kawamura. Matson. Oh, another pass gets away. And now an over and back. So that call, Kanemaru chased it down. And uh, the San Neo Phoenix, not on the same page, turning it over. Kawamura outside and well he doesn't score many points but he did right there Matsuzaki already above his average with that three Matten takes it deep and the whistle blows Josh Scott with Yokohama the Corsair is having just taken the lead. The whistle, they blow the whistle. And it looked like uh, Scott was trying to lay off so he didn't commit the foul, so he didn't go after it aggressively, but he still was hit with the, uh, with the foul. So now he's going to go out. Utah back in. Devin Oliver, Kawamura, King, and Matsuzaki are the five in the game. Matsuzaki. Makes the first. 
He is a beast, averaging 10.2 points, 6.7 rebounds coming into this game. Hailed from Pontiac, Michigan. They played at Georgia. Also had spell in the NBA, but I don't understand why with that body. And ball chased down. Kawamura has it. Oh, you can't guard him. But again, for the second time, Kawamura puts up, make, makes the shot harder than it needs to be, I think. And a little bit out of control. Dzinski falls over, and it's Utah that comes up with the basketball. So after Monson just goes one of two, the game gets a little helter-skelter. Utah inside the arc. That's a long two. He's done a great job today. Both, both ends of the floor. Here he is trying to guard Matten and gets the block from behind. Matson been with this uh, new fan his team now since second season. For that, he was in Israel with Apollo Tel Aviv. And turning it over, the travel on Hosokawa. So, despite what I would suggest was a very poor start to the game, the uh, Yokohama B Corsairs have a three point lead here in the final minute of the opening quarter. Kai King to Oliver. The question is how long do you keep Paul Murray out without giving a breather? Here he is taking the three. And that went in and out. So now what appears to be the last shot headed for San Antonio Phoenix. Can they tie it up with a three? Kick comes, the jump shot, and it's no good. And then Matson though gets the offensive rebound. Can you believe it? Well, it's not like Utah wasn't going for the basketball, but it took kind of an awkward bounce. Watch this. And well, in fact, it, really, Utah should have come down with that basketball. Maybe at bare minimum, you just don't even try to rebound it. You just try to bat it out and let the time run out. But with 2.9 seconds now, Matson can tie the game. Boy, this is a bad lane. They got to go quickly. Oh, they're going to get a shot. Oh, he held on to it just a second too long. Uh, Kento Mori. It was almost like he forgot how much time there was. That was a great try, but nevertheless, Yokohama B Corsairs lead at 24-23 at the end of one.
So far, Yante Mayton with five points, two rebounds for San and Neo Phoenix. Cody Clark has six points. Uh, for Yokohama B Corsair, is six apiece for Utah and Kawamura leading the way. Kawamura now going to sit down here at the start of the second quarter. In fact, he sat down right at the end of the first quarter. So he will remain seated, I would imagine, uh, for a few minutes here, unless everything goes haywire for the team. So Kento Mori has to hold down the fort at point guard. And he is guarding uh, Moraguchi, number 11, who's in the game. For the home team, San in Neo Phoenix. Ora still in the game. Here's Mayton, drives in and gets the bucket. So San and Neo Phoenix go back in front. Devin Oliver hands it off. And chasing it down, Utah almost doesn't get it. After the miss by Matsuzaki, but here's Utah putting it up from deep. That is a very difficult shot. And good box out by Mayton. Boy, Mayton takes up a lot of space inside. Big, strong, athletic. Kai King with the foul. He fouled uh, Ura. Moriguchi spinning around, guarded by Kento Mori. Ura. Kuzinski. And three pointer no good from Moriguchi, but I'll tell you what, having a great offensive rebounder. Uh, makes up for a lot of misses as Mayton gets another bucket. Oliver, quick pass to Utah. Great play, Devin Oliver. Dudzinski for three. Dudzinski. Oliver, beautiful bounce pass, and Kai King with the layup. So good work from Yokohama, getting some easy looks here. They got to take care of business at this end, and they're giving up some open jump shots, but they survive on that one. Now the quick pass goes off the hands of Utah. And yeah, you want to get in transition, but you've been able to run your offense and get a couple of easy looks on the previous possessions. And I suppose that was worth it, but execution wasn't quite there. Mayton whips it over to Moriguchi, and this time he knocks down the three-pointer and stretches the lead to five. Oliver takes it all the way, but the ball is stripped out of bounds by Dudzinski. Mori. Utah. Front and back of the rim stays out. Sasaki decides to go in and gets a layup. No, he misses the layup. What a reprieve that was from Yokohama B Corsairs. You now Oliver 
Let's see if they can punish the Neo Phoenix for that miss. Utah gets it to Oliver. No, they cannot as Moriguchi knocks it away. Mayton fouled. They're going to count it. They are going to count it. Boy, Mayton is just uh, taking over the game right now. No answers for him. Nobody able to compete with his physicality, that's for sure. And Kawamura is going to come back into the game as it starts to get away for for Yokohama B Corsairs and uh, also Sudo. Koya Sudo returns. Nishino is going to come in for the first time tonight. This afternoon. Or wherever you're watching. And also coming into the game is uh, for the first time is you. Not you, but Tatsana you. Tatsumi you, excuse me. Mayton with a three point play, and it's their biggest lead of the game. Eight points, three and a half minutes. I would have expected Colin Murray to come in at this time anyway, but I don't think they had any choice. They had to get him back in uh, with this game moving in the wrong direction right now for Yokohama. They need his creativity. And reaching in. Moriguchi with the foul, the reach. At the end of the day, he didn't force him to fall over, but when you reach out and you hit the MVP with, the, with your right hand as he goes past, here's Kawamura. Oh, shaking and baking. Just go. Oh, what a block from Mayton. The rim protection. And that triggers a break, but they miss. And Oliver gets it to Kawamura, who now is going to have to respect Mayton. And Mayton goes in again. And oh boy, what a swat! Back to back swats from Yante Mayton. I mean, you can't go up against Yante Mayton with that stuff. He's just going to send that right back where it came from. That was weak. Nathan made sure of it. Josh Scott back in the game. Oliver steps back, puts it up and in. Big shot. They were reeling a little bit before that one. Kuczynski. Moriguchi missing, and a chance for Yokohama B Corsairs to kind of steady the ship here. And they get it down low, and again, the block. Nishino needs to uh, figure out a different way to attack the basket. Watch this. Good pass from Kau by Kawamura, good catch. Ideally, Nishino is going to go up and dunk it. Sasaki goes out, and Yamauchi comes back in. Oliver, well short, but he gets the long rebound. Oh, he's got to hand that off. His teammate was wide open. Cody Clark, a little Euro step from the big fella. Colin Murrah, who scored with a Euro step earlier, says, hey, that was a walk. That appeal falls on deaf ears as the lead goes back to eight for San In Neo Phoenix. Missing it from deep was Sudo Yamauchi. Has to get rid of it. Cody Clark. When you figure with Mayton out, now is the time for them to come back, but San and New Phoenix have other ideas. A long rebound. Boy. Some bumping, some 
physicality not being called here by the refs. Here goes Josh Scott. Oh, nice spin. And might that be an unsportsmanlike? Certainly looked a little dodgy from here. Maybe it was just because of the way that he spun to the basket. Look at this. Dzinski. Well, I tell you what, I would be tempted to call that unsportsmanlike. He's got his left hand on his left shoulder. He's reaching around. But no appeals from Scott or Yokohama B Corsairs. 38-30, 4.15 remaining. Timeout. So coming back to live action as uh, Scott goes to the line and makes the first. And the second. Good. Kyle Murray gets the rebound. Kyle Murray for three. Yeah, that was definitely a push. Good job, Josh Scott. Kanamaru back into the game. His three-point shooting prowess is yet to become a factor today, but it's always a possibility. Oliver doesn't drop, but there's Scott again. He goes up and scores with the putback. From the elbow, the shot is good from uh, Santa New Phoenix's Ura. from Oliver. Now Carl Murrow looks up the floor. Is anybody open? And Yamauchi commits the foul to disrupt the attack. Good job coming over. Oliver. Now he's going to sit down. Right, 
Kawamura in the paint. Back to a four-point game. He's got eight points. This, you know, whistled for the foul. I mean, you look at Yokohama, you think about who left. Patrick Alda, really good player, Czech international. Charles Jackson, really good player. Masaki Morikawa and Rayuto Akaho. Uh, but the guy Jared Utah, Josh Scott, who says Sugiura, Shikara Tanaka, and Yo Nishino. You know, wouldn't think that there's a huge difference, but sometimes it comes down in terms of personnel, but it comes down to, to chemistry. It comes down to rhythm. And of course, also other teams have made moves. And Kanamaru missing. Now Kawamura chases it down. He's going to get a layup. Look at the speed, the quickness, the savvy of Yuki Kawamura. That's why you want him on the court as much as possible. There aren't too many players that are going to be able to explode quickly like this with that burst of speed to avoid the foul and beat the other team down the floor the way Yuki Kawamura can. So despite the absence of 30 Ravenna, San Antonio Phoenix leading by a couple of points. We're talking about the comings and goings, of course, Dzinski, Cody Clark, Soda Ura, and Mortoguchi, all important players that have arrived. They lost Kylo Quinn, Shinosuke Nagoro. Isaiah Hicks. Um, so they've, uh, they've rebounded nicely, winning nine of their first 11 games this season. Five and six are Yokohama B Corsair. So they're playing with a little bit more sense of desperation today. Good job, Utah, knocking it away. He's made plays on both ends of the floor today. So they can tie it or take the lead with this possession. With the B Corsairs. Again, it has been a Dr. Jeff and Mr. High performance for them today. Here is, oh boy, Utah. Looking at the referee saying he got hit on the left arm. Pass down low and the basket's good by Cody Clark. Well, that'll be frustrating. Oh, no, excuse me, that was Mayton. I mean, for my money, Mayton is the most is the best player on the court. I mean, they just nobody can stop him doing anything. Here he is. Pick. He rolls and eventually gets the pass from Yamauchi. And maybe uh, Josh Scott needs to be alert to that pass coming, even if it doesn't come initially from the player that he picks for. It could always come from the next the next player, as it did that time. Well, there's Coach Ono who won the title with uh, Chiba Jets, obviously. And San Antonio Phoenix hoping that he 
steers their team to the title as well. It's a big ask in this competition. Uh, B-League has a lot of teams, a lot of competition. It's the pick from Scott who rolls to the basket, gets it back, and great play. Just a high pick and roll. The help comes, but Yamauchi is not going to be able to do much defensively on that one. So now he goes out of the game. Motoguchi returns to the floor as Scott misses from the free throw line. It's his first miss, he had made his uh, first two free throws and misses both. Not with the doctor ordered for Yokohama. Cody Clark. And Maiden on the court at the same time. That is a tough combination uh, to have success against for Yokohama. Here's Cody Clark. Takes a D. And well, they were able to stop him. Utah hands it off. I think they want to take it down to one. Oh no, they're going to call the foul. So two free throws. I mean, I guess the only downside is that now Santa Neo Phoenix could potentially get the last shot. Well, it depends if they're going to give him free throws. Yeah, so they're over the limit already, so free throw is coming. Yokohama, meanwhile, they can, uh, they can give a foul. So Kawamura, no surprise, leading the way for Yokohama today. He's got 11 points. Perfect up the line, five of five. And the commentator's jinx gets him. He's now five of six, it's a three point deficit. And Yokohama v Corsairs now have to defend final possession of the half. And again, they had the foul to give. Sudo does commit the foul. So 4.9 seconds remaining. Time out on the court. Let's see what Ono is going to try to draw up to get a bucket here. Well, final seconds ticking off the clock. They get a three and goes off the rim, and that is how it finishes. So, Ono oh 
I uh, was able to draw up a play that got uh, Ura a look, uh, but it doesn't drop, and Santa and New Phoenix uh, retain a 42 to 39 lead over Yokohama B Corsairs at halftime.
Well, here at halftime, 42-39, San Antonio Phoenix on top of Yokohama B Corsairs, and here's how it happened. These teams trading blows early on. Yuki Kawamura getting his first bucket, driving, banking it in. And some careless play there with that early turnover by Sugiura. Leading to the easy one for Hosokawa. And a very sloppy play by Josh Scott. Ball stolen. Hosokawa with another layup. Kanamura's pass gets away. Kawamura picks it up. Beautiful bounce pass back to Josh Scott. Then you had Kawamura driving here, passing outside. And a player that gave him a little bit of a lift, Matsuzaki. But they have no answer for Yante Maton, former Georgia Bulldog. Spent some time in the NBA. Nevertheless, uh, Dzinski as well coming out and playing some big big time minutes they counted that for mayton oliver misses but scott there to clean up the mess with the rebound and go back up and score with that left hand Kanamaru missing, and then that leads to a break for Yuki Kawamura. Nobody's going to catch him. And here we are at halftime, 42-39. to 39. San Neo Phoenix on top getting uh, this bucket. Uh, the last field goal of the half by Mayton. So neither team really lighting it up from three-point range. And uh, Yokohama helping them stay in the game. Their offensive rebounding, their 25 rebounds overall to 18 for San and Neo Phoenix. Free throw shooting, pretty comparable as well. Seven fast break points for San and Neo Phoenix and eight fast break points. Got uh, points in the paint, 24 for Yokohama, 28 for San and Neo Phoenix. And looking at the key player matchup, Kawamura with 11 points. Also has the five assists and... Number 24, Sasaki has two points and two assists. But again, uh, the main man really been the bigs. Mayton, Cody Clark, those two guys combining for 22 points. And you've also got Duzinski, who's been really solid with seven points. So that trio of players with 29 of San and Neo Phoenix's uh, 42 points. Mayton with 14 points, Clark 8, and again, Dzinski has the 7, 11 points for Kawamura, 7 for Scott, or excuse me, 7 rebounds for Scott, and 5 assists for Kawamura, 3 assists for Ura. Clark has the 6 rebounds for San In.
So the second half action underway is uh, Yokohama D4 Sears inbound the basketball Sugieta to Kawamura. And uh, here we go. Who's going to want to win this more? That's what it boils down to, in my opinion. Kawamura chucking it up from deep. I'm not sure that's the answer. Attack is physical, especially when Mayton is not on the court. That would be the preferred option. And they get it down to Dzinski, and they get a much better, much higher percentage look. So he goes to nine points. And good start to the second half for Santa and Neo Phoenix. Sugiyota looks at his options, gets it back to Kawamura. Kawamura again for three. This is it late in the shot clock. And I tell you what, if you come out and you're going to settle for two threes attempts from uh, Kawamura, I just don't feel like that's a good tone setting approach to the second half. Okay, you've tried it twice. Now you need to drive or get it down low to this man right here, Scott or Utah. Oh, Murray, boy, the pressure from the defense. Somebody's got to be open. Here's Scott. Much better. Attack pressure with pressure. Now the three-pointer is missed by Sam In. So despite the wobbly start, here is Yokohama beat Corsair. He just had some success driving to the hoop. Let's see if they can get it again. They do. They get it to Scott. And traveling called on Scott. Trying to make a pass, and he drags his pivot foot. So here he is. Oh, yeah, no, he didn't even drag it. He just picked it up. Shot is good from Hosokawa. So saw his layups in the first half. Now he knocks down a tray, takes it up to a six point advantage. The temptation is to try to get it right back, and they do. And they get it back through Sudo. First three of the game, first three points of the game. Sakawa tries to feed it down low to Zizinski, goes out of bounds. But I like I like the approach. Oh, pass intercepted by Zizinski. Shot from the corner, and Hosokawa heating up. So back to a six-point game. Sudo to Scott, and again, the temptation is to put up the three. But maybe look inside. It's much better from Kawamura, right at the elbow. Mark foul down low. And two free throws coming. Sugura with the foul. Cody Clark makes the first. Play for Arkansas Razorbacks back in the day. Makes both free throws.
Kalamura much better driving. They're going to count it. It looks kind of like continuation, but we saw that call go in favor of Santa Neo Phoenix in the first half with Mayton. And here, the bump and Kalamura, I think anytime he can isolate, get a little bit of space to drive to the basket, but he has to take that option. Do not settle for three. Drive to the hoop. 52 49. They're having much more success doing that. Clark, this is the Dijinsky foul before the shot. Four minutes here into the second half. Well, Sudo's going to go out of the game. He's going to sit down with his third foul. And that means Tanaka is going to check into the game for the first time. Shikar Tanaka. Here's Kawamura getting the rebound, and he's going to drive in and get the bump and go to the line. Moriguchi whistled for the foul. Watch this. Yes. Yep. That is a good call. He barged right into him. Santa Neo Phoenix acting like Carl is getting the all-star treatment, but that was a good call. Utah. Here's Kawamura, much better. Coming off open in rhythm, and he ties it at 52. So, Mayton now in the game, and this is the big test. How do you compete with Santa and Neo Phoenix with uh, Yante Mayton in the game? Kawamura showing that range. And again, it just feels right, doesn't it? Taking the three-pointer in that situation, not just immediately right at the start of the shot clock, get a couple passes, catch it and flow. Cody Clark, Takawa now down low, and Mayton doesn't catch it. A rare case where Yante Maiden does not come through. Kalamura, you can feel right now he knows it's money time for him. I mean, it's money time, the, the final 15 minutes of the game. He is not going to want to come out at all. And I don't think they can afford to take him out. Utah puts it up. And you know what? He was open. But it was an awkward feel to that jump shot. He should have passed it. And they pay the price. Kaura goes right to the other end and scores with the left-handed layup. And look at that, almost coming up with the steal. Good work by Sasaki. It's got to be Kawamura time, but you've also got Oliver. And if Oliver plays to his potential, oh, Tanaka, I was thinking, not a good idea, but he made it. And that is tying the game at 54. Cody Clark takes the shot, goes down, doesn't get the call. Mason with the rebound. Osakawa. Oh, they're going to count it. And the foul called. Now, the question is is that an off the ball foul? It is indeed. Boy, what a Sugi, Sugiura. Barges into the screen setter, Ura. 
just an awful play. So he makes that. And they're going to retain possession. Could be a huge trip down the floor. They do attempt a three. Mayton misses. And as long as Mayton wants to put up three pointers, you're much happier than seeing him go to work down low, in my opinion. Oliver. Doesn't settle. They pass it around, and there's Scott doing Josh Scott things, getting the rebound. Oliver drives. Oh, gets blocked by Mayton. Mayton's rim protection is excellent. Three-pointer. Oh, boy, that was a big-time sequence. Started by the Yante Mayton block and finished by the Sasaki three-pointer. And the lead goes back to six. Colin Murray hears the whistle goes in and once again goes to the line for a three-point play. Look at this, the savvy, the smarts. He was pushed with the right forearm. I mean, that is... Not even close, Ura. I don't, you know, he's not playing the ball. And Colin Ura just uh, accepting the challenge, going in and scoring and making it a three-point game once again. Colin Ura having a nice game. No surprise. Bounce pass. And Mayton. Called the foul before the shot. He was surrounded by three Yokohama players. It wasn't too much contact. Yeah, it looked like Colin Moore might have got him on the right arm. So a good spot by the referee. And Mason goes to the line and makes the first. He's got 15 points. Oh, six, 15 points, rather. So it's eight rebounds well on his way to a double-double. Oliver elected not to shoot it. Gives it to the man with a hot hand. Now the double comes. Kawamura. Ooh. Loses his handle. Gets it back. Shot clock winding down. They've got to launch it. Tanaka for three. Oh. Doesn't get the shooter's bounce. And Tanaka looks good. He's playing with some confidence. That was a cow a shot. Does not drop, but a foul called. So they will maintain possession. Yeah, it was just a little bit too much. Grabbing and pushing on Josh Scott. Well, it was good minutes by Tanaka. Now he goes out. Kintomori comes in. Actually went to IMG. Chikara Tanaka. His uh, first free throw is good by Mayton. Only 21 years of age. That's the... Bethel University in Indiana as well. He's out of the game now. Oh boy, Murray almost turned it over. Oliver. And Oliver loses it out of bounds. Goodness me. 
Trying to make something happen. Watch Oliver here. He knows it's off him. He knows. I mean, that's ridiculous. Anyway, Yamauchi. Here goes Maiten. Can't stand in the Phoenix. Put this thing away. Maiten just dominates down low. He's got a chance for a three point play being guarded by Utah. And there's nothing Utah can do about this. It's just too much strength by Maiten. Watch him break out the gun show. No, he pulled away too early. So the lead back to eight points. And Oliver, very risky. It's a good thing that nobody was uh, going for the rebound for San and Neofenix. It could have been a disaster. So it's an eight point game. Mori calling the shots. Kai King, little runner. Oh, this is everything. It can't be, as you look at the drive and look at Mayton going up and getting the rebound, jump ball possession arrow is gonna favor the Neo Phoenix. It can't be that when Yuki Kawamura goes out, nobody's able to pick up the slack, but it feels, feels almost like that is the case, really. Certainly in the backcourt, Devin Oliver not having a great game either. I mean, he was exceptional at times last season. Maton goes right at Utah again. This time Utah wins the battle. All credit to Utah. Oliver, aggressive play, good drive, but doesn't score. Can San in Neo Phoenix lower the boom here late in the quarter, late in the third. Dudzinski dribbles, turns, puts it up and in. And sure enough, they are taking command here in this third quarter. Good quarter indeed for Dudzinski. Being guarded by a very good player in Oliver and just not even being bothered in the slightest, getting exactly what he wants. So 11 points for Tuzinski, and it's a 10 point lead. In fact, that's their biggest lead of the game. So final 30 seconds. Nice down low to Utah. Fades, puts it up and in. Well, that was a must, especially with the last shot of the third quarter. Probably going to sand in. Kamaru's how he hasn't really figured into this at all for San and Neo fans. It's a weapon just waiting to happen for them. Zinski, meanwhile, misses it deep. And that's how it finishes. So they limited the damage a little bit, cutting it back to an eight-point deficit, and they will get uh, possession here to start 
the fourth quarter. 67-59, San Antonio Phoenix leading it over Yokohama B. Corsairs. Quarter underway, and no time like the present for Yokohama B Corsairs. Make some plays here. Utah could just scored late in the third, and missing it. Driving Kai King out quickly down the floor. Dzinski punishes. And he's got a great game going, doesn't he? 13 points. A little surprised Colin Moore is not starting here in the fourth. They just don't have time to mess around with their best player not on the court. All smiles, Maiden just dominating today. And he is just third block. They get it to Oliver, and he scores on the inbounds, a chance for a three-point play. So this is a huge, huge opportunity. And that foul is on Mayton. Rare mistake by him today. Four blocks for Mayton. A little slow reacting on that one, Oliver. Gets the three-point play to cut the deficit back to seven. I mean, it's everybody is just waiting for Colin Murray to come back in. And now the turnover. Yes, it is. Oh, no, they're going to give it to San In with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Almost. Some good pressure defense. I like that wrinkle. A little trapping. Create some havoc. Maybe get some easy buckets. Kenta Moore doesn't want to foul the three point shot. Man, can you believe it? He took away his landing space, and Sudo was only too happy. Not Sudo, excuse me, Sasaki only too happy to oblige to go down. So there he is, being very close. Yeah, you just can't come close to taking away the landing space. Because if you do, uh, the shooter's definitely going to go down, and he's going to get that call. So good play by Sasaki. And it's been a, some tough, uh, tough going for number 24, a player that we highlighted at the start of the game. This is the 
second, and now he will get one more. Well, it feels like Santa and New Phoenix have kind of done their best to keep the, to maintain this, uh, to keep it a close game. To have it hang in the balance. Can you believe it? He missed all three. Well, maybe the ball doesn't lie. Maybe Maury didn't foul it. What a development. If they can score here, just imagine the swing. The psychological boost. Oliver for three. Good! And that, my friends, is what you call a six-point swing. Unbelievable. Instead of going up by 10, they now lead by just four. And now another turnover. Great play, Maury reaching in. And excuse me, not Maury, uh, uh, it was Matsuzaki causing the turnover. And it's a two-point game. And if somehow Yokohama come back and win this game with Kawamura out of the game, I mean, I don't think anybody could have written this script how this sequence has happened right here late or rather early in the in this fourth quarter. So Santa Neo Phoenix just not able to slam the door shut. Three critical missed free throws. The three pointer made by De by Devin Oliver and now the turnover and the fast break and suddenly it is a two point game. Wow. Kentamori still in the game. And Yamauchi misses the three, but there is Dzinski with a huge offensive rebound and putback. He's got 15. After a four point game. Mori passes it to Oliver. Kentamori. Guy King. Man with a hot hand. Suzaki misses. Dzinski. Oh boy, it's the Dzinski hour here in the fourth quarter as his uh, five consecutive points takes it back up to a 74 67 advantage. And I think Kawamura has to get off the bench quickly. Mori. Kai King. Good. No, maybe not. Sit him back down. Seven points. Can you believe it? Yamauchi called for an offensive foul, giving the finger wag to the referee. That's dangerous. Probably get away with it in Japan. They don't seem to. Respond. Uh, uh, the technicals. There is uh, Kyle Morris here. He comes back into the game. His team down four, and they've got possession. And you simply need him. You have to have him on the court. Those are good minutes from Kenta Morris. Boy, what a big three pointer that was from Kai King. He is driving, and how about Kai King? Forget the Duzinski hour. This is now the Kai King hour. He's got nine points. It's a two-point game. Sanin simply cannot pull away. Yamauchi. Clark. Big time three from Cody Clark. 
He's got 13. Utah. Oliver. Ooh. Almost with the moving screen to reach and the foul. Oh, they're going to give him two free throws. Much to the chagrin of the home team. Here it is again. Yeah, that's a good, a good call. The thing is, already is, knows the foul's coming, and he is going to get into the shooting motion. Josh King, Josh Scott, rather, needs to come out and play his best basketball here down the stretch in terms of really controlling the boards. And you would imagine that Mayton will come back into the game at some point. As Kawamura is the first to go. And the second. Well, he's got 24 points, just continues to dazzle in the B-League. He also has five assists, five rebounds. Now the turnover, here's Kai King. Huge minutes for Kai King. He's played well. Here he is again. The runner gets in, gets it to go. Well, you're looking for that extra little oomph in the team, and Kai King is providing it today. Certainly in this fourth quarter. Coming of age party for this young man. Only averaging 5.6 points per game. He's got, a, he's got 11 right now. One point game. Three pointer. Misses, but great work following up the shot. Was well, Sasaki. Cody Clark gets down low on Utah. Utah didn't leave his feet, had his hands straight up, but he could have lowered them right at the end. Watch this again. Oh, no, he did leave his feet. That was a good pump fake by Cody Clark. Even if you go straight up, and uh, on the pump fake. I mean, there's a good chance they're going to call the foul on you. So Cody Clark makes the first. Well, you can always use uh, Kawamura as a decoy and let Kai King continue to do his thing. Because Kai King right now is having himself quite a game. Cody Clark so takes it back up to a three-point lead. Kuviura comes back into the game for Matsuzaki. So that is a big substitution. Kuviura hasn't really been exceptional today. Kawamura stops. Doesn't pop. Kaziski comes up with the basketball. It's money time. We're under five minutes remaining. We have Dzinski guarded, and the pass almost goes out of bounds. Good save. Drifting in. Oh, boy, that was a big-time play. Not only that, he gets fouled. What a – you know, he hasn't really done too much offensively tonight, Sasaki, but that was a huge play. He makes the save here. Look at this. He catches it. And he drives in, and he sees the pass. A little bit of space, he gets fouled. What a... Quite possibly the uh, the play of the game right here, if they hold on and win it. So timeout on the court. Big time play by Sasaki. Well, 19 points for Mayton, 18 for Duzinski, 15 for Clark. 
Hosokawa has 13, and Sasaki now has 7. He's going to the line, trying to score 8. It really is bizarre, though. Kanemaru is just a complete non-factor. Played just over eight minutes. So you've got 24 for Kawamura, 10 apiece for Scott and Utah, nine for King and Oliver. I thought, I thought King had 11, but he's got nine. And there's Kai King. And interestingly, he is not going back into the game. And I'm not sure I agree with that. But coach knows his team better than me. So he's going to put, instead, Coach Yamada is reinserting uh, Sudo. Sudo's got three points. Well, a little bit of damage limitation there with that miss. And Scott almost has it stolen. Palmer has it. Completes the three point play. It's a five point game. Sugiura, tough drive. It doesn't drop. Can't blame him for taking that. He was almost pulling that game to within a couple or a few points. This time, Cody Clark trying to do a little too much, and Utah has it. Wide open, and an unsportsmanlike. Possibly. Utah looks and says, Ura just grabbed my arm. Clark is very slow to get up and walk right down the court. Look at this. I, mean, I don't know why he's so slow getting up the court. And there's nothing over. Oh, I see. He just kind of slipped because he was trying to get back up. Uh, indeed, number three on Ura is not an unsportsman like. Utah pulls up well short. Not for the first time today. He's really just come up short on a couple. Scott picks up the dribble. And traveling is the call. Josh Scott, not for the first time tonight. Feels like San In are gonna weather the storm. Here's the three-pointer. Good! Well, Sasaki. A couple of big possessions that he's come through now. The lead goes back to eight. Three and a half minutes remaining. It's gotta be Kawamura time. He needs to he needs to drive. Now he's gonna put it up from deep. Hits the three. Forget what I have to say. He knows what's best. And he gets that deficit right back down to five points. And uh, Kawamura with 27. Ooh, that pass gets away. Leads to a break for Kawamura. Oh, they're going to call the foul. He's got a chance for the third time today. He's made a shot on the drive and is going to the line for a three-point play. And San and Neo Phoenix just can't get out of their own way. That was uh, Sasaki turning it over. And the ball just fell perfectly to Kawamura, who knew exactly what to do with it. And he gets the foul, goes to the line. Remember, New Phoenix 9-2 and two to start this season, 5-6 and six for Yokohama. The Beat Corsair fans hoping that Yuki and lead him to a comfort behind win here. He's pulled them to within two points. You can see he's having a, a terrific game. I'm not going to say exceptional because that's pretty much what he does. But for the average basketball player, yes, it is exceptional. Cody Clark dribbling. He's about stepping back now. He drives in. 
Yeah, I think Josh Scott is not going to be happy that the whistle has blown on this. Ah, yeah. Three fouls on Josh Scott. Cody Clark perfect at the line today. He's six of six. Make it seven of seven. Ooh, only makes one of the two. And now it's a three-point game. Ooh, dangerous pass back. Utah with uh, Suzaki close by. Kentamori in the game. Here goes Kawamura. And then he is fouled. The hand check by Dudzinski. Burrow with the foul. He needs to be careful. He doesn't remonstrate too much. There's too much hand checking going on out there. I mean, yeah, you want to you want to force the turnover, but you're not allowed to. You know, they gave you the benefit of the call against Josh Scott with the travel. And Kyle Murrow only makes one of two. And then Scott whistled for the foul. So that will send Zizinski to the free throw line. Zizinski today has not attempted a free throw. Look at them, they're both locked up. Four fouls on Scott. I really hate that that locking arms has really become a, a part of basketball. I mean, it's just, it's just not good. But also, who do you call the foul on? Dzinski misses with his first attempt. Sainan having a nightmare at the free throw line. Below 60% now in the 50s. And he misses both. Oliver rebounds the miss. What an opportunity. And again... San and New Phoenix should probably be up more than they are. Pump fake. Oh, nice handoff, and we've got a tie game. Good decision by Kawamura, the pump fake. And then you saw the shot blocker come into the picture. Well, surely they need to get Maiden back in the game. Maiden's got the full block. Money time. Clark for three, short, Maury with the rebound. What a finish, folks. Well, we say finish, who knows, we may have overtime. Here's Kawamura, stops, and had his defender on skates. Dzinski rebounds. So now it's the Neo Phoenix with the opportunity to take the lead. Colin Murray now two of seven from three-point range after that miss. Ura, he's left open. He puts it up. And Utah, despite being pushed by Jadzinski, comes down with the basketball. Looks like Jadzinski got away with a shove. Kenta Mori, who's going to be the hero? For one of these two teams, Kawamura. He puts it up again, and it's long again. 10 second differential on the game clock and the shot clock. Cody Clark passes it back outside to Ura. And Clark with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Ura, is he going to dribble drive? No, he's going to launch it. He, oh, it goes in and out. Can you believe it? Oh, and it's going to stay at this end. Possession 
Now they can review this if they want to. Such a big possession. Sazaki in the right place at the right time. Will they use a head coach's challenge or will they just go ahead and review it themselves? So Yamada is indeed going to challenge this out of bounds. He may as well. He doesn't want to finish the game without it. I mean, it could be clear that it's San and New Phoenix basketball. Oh, 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 man. Oh, they might win this. It is oh so close. The thing is, do they have the definitive angle? It's Maury and oh. I think it's going to be Yokohama ball. Because if Maury hit it, it would have gone in a different direction, it seems like. But anyway, they'll be looking to see if they can get a definitive angle. One of the big talking points of this game will be the 14 to 25 free throw shooting for San and Neo Phoenix, just 56%. Uh, Coach Ono knows that is right now looming large. Okay, what are they going to decide? Oh, they're going to maintain possession at this end. Well, the question I have is, did they have a better view than what we saw? Because while it looked like to me the ball went off San and Neo Phoenix uh, I, I wouldn't say that it was definitive and if it's not definitive you can't change the call at least that's my opinion it wasn't definitive okay 13.6 seconds left might they get another look for Cody Clark who looked pretty good on that free attempt he just didn't make it Went in and out. Uro has it. Overtime beckons, folks. But are we going to. Oh, oh boy, he slips down. They get it back. Cody Clark has it taken away. Unbelievable. And right at the end, and we have got overtime. Incredibly. Chaos on that last possession. So we got free basketball. Let's see what happened. So the pick came, Ura went down, and then Oliver was able to reach in, knock it away, and then Kawamura, his heave was short. Let's look at this again. So Car Moore went down. I don't know why he went down, to be honest, but maybe uh, maybe there was a bump, but the Neo Phoenix might be thinking there should have been a foul on Kawamura there because Aura also went down after that. But we have overtime. It's interesting that San and New Phoenix have scored 25 points off of the turnovers. There's just 11 turnovers by Yokohama B Corsair. So that's a lot of points to score off those turnovers. 16 points scored off turnovers for Yokohama. Yokohama out rebounding them 43 to 38. Yokohama bench is outscored the home team bench 28-24. And this game would be done and dusted if 
the uh, San and Neo Phoenix had made free throws, but they had missed a bunch. They've missed 11 of their 25, 56%. Well, Sakawa inbounds the basketball as we get underway in the overtime. Mura, guarded by Kawamura. Cody Clark. Mura gets it to Zizinski. He backs up Oliver. Nowhere to go. Puts up a difficult shot. Utah with the rebound. Well, Dzinski's been good, but that was a difficult shot, no doubt about it. Utah for three, he doesn't hesitate, and it was a little long. Dzinski for three, this time wide open, and he buries it. points for Dzinski. Kawamura. Now he misses, but the long rebound comes to Oliver. Kawamura just 2 of 10 from deep. Oliver drives and earns a trip to the line fouled by Hosekawa. Three forty one remaining, huge free throws for Oliver. Oliver makes both free throws. Clutch shooting from Devin Oliver. Mura has it taken away. Good job, Kalamura. So Kalamura with the quick hands. Do you want to get something going to the basket or do you want to try to shoot a jumper? Oliver with that big Utah wide open. We could not have had a better look. Pass up to Dzinski. The ball goes out of bounds. Deflected out of bounds. I don't know why they're continuing to put up the threes. There, there were 7 of 27 before that one by Utah. Now 7 of 28. So very 25% you know, shooting. Try to get something going to the basket. Three-pointer. Sasaki missing, but there is Cody Clark with the offensive rebound and putback. Under three minutes remaining. It remains money time. Utah, shaking, baking, and missing. Clark going up for the rebound, falls down, doesn't try to stand up, but hands it off. And right now, Yokohama B-Force here is just cold from the floor in overtime. Sasaki to Dzinski. He was going for the dunk and was denied by Utah. You do not have to try to tie the game with a three. Take the best shot you can get, in my opinion. Oliver, over to Utah. Shot clock winding down, Kawamura. And they've got to hurry, look at the hustle. Boy, what 
A bad time to have a shot clock violation for Yokohama, but you got to give credit to the San and Neo Phoenix defense. Just uh, fumbled the handoff. I mean, you could argue that Utah needs to pass it to somebody else because he could see that Kalamura had two players on him. Well, they need to stop. A bucket here is going to make it difficult, especially a three-pointer. A good harassing defense, and they force the turnover. It goes off of Budzinski right at the end of the play, just five minutes before the end of the shot clock. I'll be tempted to put Kai King back into the game. I mean, he's a player that's able to create. But you got to give credit to more. Oh, look at that. They are going to put Kai King back in. I mean, because it's, it feels like their offense is dried up. They need something else. They need a lift. But that was a good job by Mori defensively. But the three pointers are not falling for Yokohama. Just 7 of 28. So you don't need to be thinking about three, although Kai King has hit one. Boy, the back throw cut is there. Bora lost sight of Kawamura. And once again, a one-point game. Kai King. Guarding Sasaki. Gets it back to Cody Clark. Doesn't settle. Oh, he gets blocked by Utah. Shot clock about to expire because it didn't hit the rim. There's Cody Clark on the baseline, and I'm not sure that he realized that. What a play by Utah. Spectacular block. Spectacular play by that man right there. Here at Utah, 10 points, 10 rebounds, four steals, now three blocks. Could end up being the biggest play of the game. Well, the offense has not been good for Yokohama. Here is the penetration. And, well, Kai King drives in. That's the man! Kai King, the X Factor, having his best game of the season, you'd have to say, considering the stakes. And if I'm Yamada, I'm getting that guy more playing time. He has been clutch today. Kai King doesn't hesitate. Drives in. Beautiful. Beautiful play. I thought that number 24, Matsuzaki, kind of blew it because he wasn't ready to put it up, but they were patient. They got the layup. And just tip your hat to this player right here. Number 23 has been terrific. And what I like about it is he's just kind of taken in his stride. I mean, he is, you know, for me, obviously you always look at Kawamura, what he's been able to do. Utah has made some exceptional plays, but the X factor goes to Kai King uh, for what he's been able to, to do coming off the bench. Fourth season. That's Yokohama. Three years 
of age. Crunch time. And they tried to get it to Mayton. Oliver, oh, he had it. And then Mayton didn't give up on the play, and he catches it and scores. And great decision to get Mayton back in. I've got to be honest, I've been wondering where he's been. Why is it taking Ono so long to put him back in the game? Look at this. He got his hand on it there. But after he was able to get his hand on it, it looked like Mayton just kind of uses his body to get to get him out of the picture. No, he just uh, was able to reach up and get it. Look at this. He's being pushed. I mean, that is a battle right there. Mayton, strongest man on the court. He's always going to win that battle. Twenty-one points for Maiden. He's got ten rebounds. He's got four blocks. I know the temptation is to think that Kawamura has to be the man, but if he does not have the penetration, Kai King has shown that he is capable of making the big play already. Do not be surprised to see Kai King once again get his hands on the ball. I'm pretty sure the New York Phoenix would rather see Kai King attacking them. But who knows, maybe it's going to be Utah. Maybe they'll take it down. You don't want to leave too much time for the other. Oh, no, they're going to take it early. And they are going to take the lead with Kawamura. What do I know? 35 spectacular points. They didn't wait. Oh, they get it back to Mayton with 4.5 seconds left. They have just had no answers at all for Yante Mayton today. Ideally, they, they would rather get it to Paul Murray further up the court. He's got to go quickly. He doesn't have much time. He launches it for three. Oh, and it's long. And the San and Neo Phoenix win it in overtime. And I don't, you know, say what you want to about Koamura. Spectacular performance overall. But getting a three from him at the end, I don't think that's what they wanted because he finishes two of 11 and San and Neo Phoenix hold on 94 to 93. Well, Yante Mayton, the MVP, the way he comes back into the game and immediately delivers with those two buckets. 23 points, 10 rebounds, four blocks. And of all the games that they have lost, Yokohama, I mean, it, you know, it's not like they played great from start to finish in this game, but they were in it because San and Neo Phoenix had a bad day at the free throw line, yet uh, Yokohama not able to take advantage in the end, and they just could not get stops against Mayton who was 9 of 11 from the floor, 9 of 10 inside the arc. Uh, the only thing that he did not excel at today was his free throw shooting. I mean, he was 5 of 9, and maybe when you look back at it, maybe you should have fouled him. So you can see next up for these two teams on November 11th, New Phoenix taking on Ibaraki Robots and San Rocco Shibuya will be the next opponents for the Yokohama B Corsairs. Tough loss, not the end of the season by any stretch of the imagination for Yokohama, but for the Santa and New Phoenix, a huge win. But I do think that you want to draw on the positives if you're Yokohama, and one of those positives is Kai King. He needs more minutes.
can see Coach Ono coming out. They won without 30 Ravena today, the Filipino International, recovering from the concussion. Well, first of all, he said Kawamura was amazing. That was his first reaction. So the MVP is Maiten. Ono also said, thank you for coming. Soto Ura uh, slipped when he was last playing, but uh, he made that missed shot. Anyway, Yanti Maiten. Thank Mayton. you, thank you, thank you. I think it was I'm on. Bo, my Mayton was spectacular, really. It's just a uh, unstoppable. Uh, the game was good. We had to they have a really good guard, so it was, I know it was tough on Soto. Oh. I said, I said, it was a really good game. Uh, we had to really come and play pretty hard defense. Our guards were moving, chasing the whole time. So uh, it allowed me to get a lot of space um, on offense as well. So. So, 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 Uh, we thank all the boosters, fans, everyone uh, for coming out and supporting us. We are trying to keep this uh, winning going um, and make it permanent. So thank you guys again. 本当にあの皆さんの応援ありがとうございます。これからもあの連勝を重ねられるように頑張りますので引き続き応援の方よろしくお願いいたします。Now we're going to hear from Budzinski, I think. So, first of all, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, really, today, the Dajinski player has been able to get the ball in the middle of the game, and get the ball in the middle of the game. Are you going to have a lot of pressure on the ball? Are you going to have a lot of pressure on the ball? Yeah, I mean, I saw how hard our guards were working uh, to keep this guy, um, you know, down a little bit. So I um, had to do my job and be physical and get some rebounds. And, um, you know, we worked very hard for this win. So uh, thank everybody for coming out and seeing this one. So this is the guard who was able to hold the guard to hold the guard. So I was able to hold the guard to hold the guard to hold the defense and hold the rebound to hold the guard to hold the guard. So thank you very much for your support. さあ、今日ですね、ご家族の方もね、応援に来られているということなんですけど、ご家族の方にも一言お願いします。Yeah, uh, thank you for your support. Big energy in the gym tonight, and um, you know we really feel that we feed off of that, and um, in an overtime game, it's very important. So thank you for coming out, and uh, we'll see you this weekend. 本当にあの皆さんのエナジーのおかげで最後大事の場面もしっかり決め切れたと思いますので、今週末もまた試合がありますので、ぜひ会場でまた応援のほどよろしくお願いいたします。ありがとうございました。David Dzinski, the most important player of the game. So David Dzinski, 21 points, seven rebounds. A lot of those rebounds in the second half, two blocks.
And again, you can see the next opponents, Sunrockers hosting Yokohama on November 11th and also uh, this weekend, November 11th, Santa Neo Phoenix will be at home against Ibaraki Robots. Look at that. I believe that's the attendance today, 4,555. Here in the Toyoshi City Gymnasium. That's a new record, in fact. Wow. Impressive. This is a club that is moving in the right direction and much to build on. Of course, I'm guessing a lot of them came to see Kawamura, not only their own team, and they were re rewarded by Kawamura, who had the 35 points. So there's David Dzinski taking a bow, as are all of his teammates. And we'll get a look at the final stats. So Maiton, the MVP, going to sign the camera lens, as is the tradition. And Dzinski as well. So they take a lap of honor and including the mascot, 94-93 Santa Neo Phoenix winning it over Yokohama B Corsairs. Here's a look back at the highlights. Kawamura, remember, had the 35 points and uh, banked in his first couple. Did not have a good day shooting it from deep, however, which included missing that last three. He was 2 of 11. Good hustle diving on the floor for the loose ball. Again, the difficult turnover for Josh Scott. Josh Scott, meanwhile, had 10 points, 14 rebounds. So, very Josh Scott like performance today. That was uh, two of his points, courtesy of the Kalamura pass. Kalamura had six assists and five rebounds, three steals to go with his 35 points. Matsuzaki made that three-pointer. He had a good game today. Five points, a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists. But that was the man they couldn't stop. They could not stop Yankee Maton. I mean, he was, in many respects, a man amongst boys today. Just nobody, uh, any answer at all for Yankee Maton. And he could could be pound for pound, inch for inch, the strongest uh, player in this competition. Scott again, doing what he does best, getting the offensive rebound and put back. And Kanamaru did not score today. That triggered a break. 
Feels like with Kanamaru, they got to figure out a way to utilize him more. Um, and I don't know why he's not working, working out. Because he's definitely got something to bring. Oh, Maiden scoring with his back to the basket on the other side. Uh, being guarded well by Josh Scott. So it really was a, a big ask to figure out how to stop him. Sagawa came out and nailed that three-pointer early in the second half. And Colin Moore really made his presence felt, but they turned it over here. They knew exactly Dzinski, where he was going with it, into the corner. Or then passed it over to Hosegawa, who hit another three. Well, Utah had a good game today, 10 points. In the end, they only gave him nine rebounds. He had 10 at one point, four assists, three steals, three blocks. Okay. Well, was driving in and missing, leading to the break. And again, Sasaki this time bearing the three. He came to life in the fourth quarter. Kawamura three times was able to drive, get fouled while making a layup. And Dzinski again, really big, late. Illinois native. Seen Kai King highlights yet? Hopefully we will because he was a uh, huge reason why this Yokohama B Corsairs team was able to get the overtime. Zinski was three of five from three point range. Here's Kai King. Here he is driving in. Hopefully they'll uh, utilize him more moving forward. Here he is again, driving. He's taking what the defense gives him. This was a huge play. Sazaki saves it from going out of bounds. Then he goes in and does this, scores. And he's also fouled on the play, although he didn't miss the free throw. Sasaki starting to feel the confidence. Carl Murray with one of his two threes that he made today. When laid on, it looked like Carl Murray might Carl Murray might be able to get it done again. Fouled while making a layup. Went to the line to complete the three-point play. That was a pump fake, and here he makes the right decision by giving it to Oliver. Late on, though, it was the team in red that made most of the plays to Zinsky. I don't know who that is. Looks like somebody is family. And uh, Cody Clark scoring down low. Kyle Murray keeping his team in it. Not once, but twice. And here's the right decision. Kai King again. The drive. High off the glass. Might as well put a Superman cape on him today because, I mean, he was uh, jumping into a telephone booth and coming out at just the right time to rescue his team, but they just had no answer for Mayton. He catches this one. And 
I mean, this is the shot that would have won it. But in the end, the three-point shot was not kind today for Kawamura. And San in Neo Phoenix hold on for a 94-93 win. And the Toyashi City Gymnasium. So 94-93, look at the free throw shooting despite... 56% shooting, San and Neo Phoenix at the line survive uh, to win. They had three more three-pointers today. Yokohama actually had three more makes inside the arc. Also, San and were out-rebounded. 15 fast-break points for San and 13 or 12 for Yokohama. And 48 points in the paint for both teams. Yeah, 15 and 12. So, key players, Sasaki and Kawamura. And no doubt that Kawamura won that. It's just a shame for Yokohama that his uh, three-point shooting was a, a little bit better. But you know what? You can't have it all. 35 points and six assists for Kawamura. 10 points and four assists for Sasaki, who is two of four from deep. Mayton, Dudzinski, and Clark with 23, 21, and 18 points, respectively. For the San and Neo Phoenix, 35, 13, and 12 for Kawamura, King, and Oliver in defeat. Yokohama dropping to 5 and 7 in the Central. Meanwhile, San and Neo Phoenix improving to 10 and 2. Twelve rebounds uh, by Clark led his team in that department, whereas Scott had fourteen to lead the way for Yokohama, and Ura had ten assists, six assists for Kawamura. So overall, good good play by Ura, ten assists to go with his four points. Also, here we have the uh, again the the next games coming up. Throughout Sun Rock and Shibuya at home to Yokohama. San and New Phoenix hosting Ibaraki Robots. So those are game twos in the setups. So the seats now emptied here in the Toyashi City Gymnasium. Santa Neo Phoenix win at 94-93 over Yokohama BC Corsairs. That's the B League. Thanks for watching, everybody.